Welcome back. Great to have you aboard. You know, last night we were talking about a, a case out of Florida, the Seminole Heights serial killer. And the alleged killer in that case, kind of unusual when it comes to serial killers because he's kind of young and just doesn't fit the type of person. He just was playing some college basketball and was back. Parents are like super great people and just didn't fit the mold of what you would expect when you're tracking down an alleged serial killer. Well, tonight we've got another story that's kind of like that as we bring in Court TV special contributor Ashley Banfield who's going to tell us all about what may have been or who may have been uh, our nation's first female serial killer. May have been. There is some debate. But if you ask Harold Schechter, a famed crime author, who the first female serial killer was, Vinny, you will get the answer. Belle Gunness. Feast your eyes at this lovely lady. There's that headline, murderess is made victim of own schemes. I love those headlines. I oh, wish we could get back to those. Let me tell you a little bit about Vel Gunness. She's Norwegian and emigrated to the United States and perpetrated her crimes mostly in Indiana and Illinois. But here's what she would do, Vinny. She would put out want ads for husbands, uh, luring them to her rural farm, um, but asking them to bring money and not tell anyone. Now, I don't know about you, but if I were a dude, I probably wouldn't have answered that ad. But many did. More than a dozen did. And they disappeared. And the story goes that one of those men who disappeared had told his brother that he was going to meet a woman and move to her. And when he didn't return and that brother couldn't reach him, the alive brother went to the apartment of the old brother, of the dead brother, and found the correspondence decided to track him down at this farm. And that's how she was ultimately discovered. And the dead were ultimately discovered. There were sort of divots everywhere in her lawn where she had buried people. And of course, they had decomposed and the lawn had sunk. So it was quite uh, macabre how they found a lot of these victims all in pieces. And uh, certainly the dead brother was discovered by his brother as well. It was a, just an amazing tale. But I don't do it justice. The person who really does it justice is Harold Schechter. So I called him up and asked him all about Belle Ganesse. Harold, is it fair to say that, that Belle Ganesse may have been this country's first sort of violent female serial killer? Uh, yes, uh, not only the first, but kind of unique, really. Belle, who was raised on a farm and was very, very familiar with butchering animals, is really the only one I could think of offhand uh, who would commit that particular kind of atrocity. Uh, she would murder her male victims and then chop them up and bury their remains in her front yard. Reading some of the uh, stories about her, it's just sort of gobsmacking how um, many men she reached. I mean, I don't know if these numbers are right, but they think somewhere around 14, but maybe as many as 40 victims, and her modus operandi was luring them to her farmhouse on the promise of marriage. Do I have that right? Uh, basically, yeah. It is hard to know exactly how many victims she killed. She was a Norwegian immigrant, uh, and her modus operandi was to place uh, these matrimonial ads in uh, Norwegian language newspapers and lure lonely Norwegian bachelors to her farmstead uh, with a promise of uh, not only marriage, but co-ownership of this very, very handsome property. And then, uh, of course, she would instruct them to bring their life savings along. And then she would kill them and chop them up and bury them in her yard. There's one other detail from, and this comes from a victim's brother who was able to find some correspondence in his dead brother's, you know, previous uh, abode that yeah. said, you know, like you said, come, bring money, and then keep it a secret. What part of that did those men not get that this was really dangerous? Or was it just that women were considered dangerous? Well, it was partly that, uh, you know, if you read Bell's letters, a fair number of them survived. She wasn't sexually seductive, particularly. Um, but she was seductive in the sense of offering, you know, these lonely bachelors uh, a, a wonderful home and a caring wife and uh, regular home-cooked Norwegian meals 
and so on and so forth. I think the letter you referred to suggested to that future victim that he keep it a secret because it would be such a nice surprise to his relatives when they found out, you know, he was so happily married um, to this woman. It seemed to me, she was pretty crafty, that her first husband died on the day two insurance policies crossed so that she could collect on both. And that was not considered to be a murder. Maybe in retrospect, they thought differently. And her second husband died, I think within eight months of the skull fracture, Conveniently, a meat grinder fell off a shelf and she said he'd been reaching for it. So do they get added to the list of victims? Oh, absolutely. That aroused a lot of local suspicion and there was an investigation, uh, but ultimately she was exonerated. But once her other atrocities were discovered, it became clear that she had also done away with two previous husbands. By the way, the discovery came, and I'll get to this in a second, because her farmhouse was ablaze and a horrible killing happened in terms of her children were inside and incinerated and a headless female body was found inside, presumably her, and then afterwards, maybe not so presumably her. But before I get to that, they discovered all of these indentations in the, in the yards around the property. And lo and behold, it was it was corpses mutilated in gunny sacks. Is that correct? Yeah, absolutely. They, they were initially discovered because the brother that you mentioned, um, you know, became suspicious when his uh, brother disappeared. Uh, when he found the correspondence with Bell, he realized that his brother had gone out, uh, presumably to marry her. Uh, and he went out to the farm after the fire. And he was the one while walking around the property uh, discovered this suspicious indentation in the ground and uh, had it dug up and you know much to his horror there were the as you say mutilated remains of his brother and then uh, the authorities began excavating uh, the rest of her property and just found well they really stopped after digging up about a dozen remains that's why nobody knows for certain I find that shocking that they just stopped. I mean, it's true, as I understand, that most of the, the dead men were, were not identified. But good God, the fact that they stopped at 11. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and what's fascinating about her story, if that isn't fascinating enough, is that this headless female corpse was found in that incinerated farmhouse with the body of these children. But it's not widely thought now that she was that body. It's now widely thought that she got away and, and lived out her life, correct? That was one possibility really, you know, from the time her atrocities were discovered, uh, you know, the notion that uh, the torso, the charred torso of the woman they found uh, in the remains of her burnt farmhouse uh, were in fact not those of Bell. Uh, obviously very suspicious that there was no head. Uh, so many, many people believed that she had decoyed uh, a woman of her approximate stature to the farmhouse killed her and staged her own suicide. With her uh, own children though. I mean, that, that's what's so unbelievable. Well, that's another fascinating thing about Belle um, and highly disturbing. Uh, she was by all accounts, a, a woman with a very, very strong maternal impulse. And yet she not only murdered those children in the fire, but she also murdered uh, a 16 year old foster daughter that she was very, very close to. But again, very hard to figure out the psychology of a homicidal psychopath like Bell Gunnis. Maybe it gave us some clues to what uh, we see happening today. Maybe not. They, they all seem slightly the same, but definitely so different. Harold Schechter, thank you so much. It's been a delight to talk about this. Even though it's awful stuff, it's fascinating. Yeah, fascinating story. Well, thank you for, for having me on. And um, Vinny, you know, sometimes uh, there's debate about whether Bell Ganesh was actually the first female serial killer in America. There are other camps who believe that uh, Lavinia Fisher in South Carolina was the first female serial killer in the U.S. because in the early 1800s, uh, she and her husband, John, owned a hotel and guests would mysteriously disappear there. And it wasn't until one guest felt a little suspicious uh, that he decided to sleep with one eye open, actually in a chair. 
And then he woke up to see his bed collapsing through a, a, a secret gate in the floor and knew right away that was supposed to be his fate. And he jumped out the window and ran and uh, notified authorities. But I mean, <laughs> you, you can't write this stuff. Can you imagine what it would be like to be Harold Schechter and sort of live these remarkable stories of history and recreate them in his books? Yeah, well, that music that was playing during the interview, that was just, that's just in his house all the time, right? <laughs> it's always playing in the background. You walk in and you're like, all right, nice to see you. <laughs> Only Vinny Politan would come up with that. <laughs> it does suit the whole it notion does. of what it, it would it, be like to be a true crime author, though, doesn't it? Yeah, and, you, and but you think about the old, you know, the old days, right? Because we're looking at these pictures of Bell, and, and you just don't, think that people did that stuff back then, that, you know, life was much more simple and it was pure oh. and it was clean, but no way. I mean, this Dang. woman was evil. She was evil. And by the way, she was not the only evil woman out there killing whole bunches of people. There was a, a countess or a, a, uh, I think she was Hungarian who was murdering and torturing um, peasant teenage girls and, uh, you know, to the tune of like dozens and dozens. And I mean, you could go down a rabbit hole on this stuff. Lots of people all around the world, lots of women all around the world. One count was like 600. A woman had killed 600 people. Uh, so, no, I think it's like it's like the oldest profession. This one is also timeless. And you know what? I, I laugh only because it's just it's unfathomable that this woman would get away with these kinds of things, right? In this day and age, you, you don't think it, it could happen. Well, it does. Here we are, you and I, covering a spree killer just from a couple of years ago. And um, and honestly, it's just one of those things. You know what I, I often say to people when they ask me about what we do for a living? I say, you know, it's a little like we all belong to this flock and we're all kind of tight. And then every so often, one of us wanders real far. And we just wonder what took them out there. That's kind of how I feel about the, the job that we do covering crime and justice and, and the criminally, um, you know, inclined. Absolutely. Ashley, great stuff. Thanks so much. You're welcome.